Okay, I'm standing here in front of a brand new, fresh off the press refuge. It is our primary product these days in the Earthship world. I'm going to take you through it relative to the six points that we address in every airship. The first point being comfortable shelter without fossil fuel. Well, clearly the solar face gives you uh, solar gain and the inside depth of the building is set up so that it pretty much will never get below 70 degrees. And then that's the heating. The cooling is done, you see the transoms over both doors. They're gravity operated transoms. They work very smooth and easy. And then as you um, open the transoms, then we have tubes that go through the rear north wall. And you're gonna be aimed at one right here as you come in. And it's very cool in here. And the tubes are open. They're 15 inch diameter tubes, 12 inch diameter tubes that go through the north wall. And as the air comes through the tubes, it loses its heat to the cooler earth. Now you close these off for winter. You know, you just close them off for winter and you open them up for summer. That's all there is to it. And the cool air comes through now the hottest air in the room is going to rise, obviously, and it's going to go out the transom. And you're creating a natural convection movement of air here. Now that is the cooling of the refuge airship. And this is the case in every room, in the two bedrooms and in the kitchen, living, dining. And the tubes bring in the air. Now we'll go around and look at the tubes on the back side of the building. Now you can cut us. Okay, we're on the north side of the building now, and we're looking at the inlets of the tubes. See, the tubes go through that entire hill. The hot air that goes in them, it's sucked in by the escape air of the transoms. It loses its heat to the earth as it goes through there. There is the propane tank. When we do put in a propane stove or a propane backup hot water heater, we have a propane tank. A minuscule amount gets used for that because we do not use it for heating or cooling. So here are our tubes for ventilation, one for each room, two in the kitchen, living, dining. And you saw how they enter the rooms and air escapes out the transoms. That is the heating and the cooling. The building is massive and it stores either one of these temperatures. Now I'm standing here on the south side again, and I'm looking at the eight 400 watt panels. That's all it takes to power this building. Uh, we mount them in the same configuration as the fascia of the building, and they become part of the shape of the building rather than the industrial look of mounting them outside. So we have eight, 400 watt panels, they bring the power into the power system that we make and install anywhere in the world. And the power system is right here in the middle of the building in this little closet. And here it is, inverter, charge controller, the entire power system. Now right behind these shelves, are eight sealed batteries. Uh, we don't have to get to them to mess with water. They're not wet batteries. And they are there and good for 10 years, 15 years, depending on uh, how you treat them, but they protect themselves pretty much with the power center. So this is the power, we call it the POM, Power Organizing Module. It's a box that we put in right in the beginning of the building and we run the tools off of it to build the building. So that's the solar power of the building, solar panels and the power system. And again, it takes a very minimal power system because we don't need any power except for our few pumps and our lights. And uh, you know, we run a washing machine, but it's a, 
it doesn't require a huge amount of power. You can watch as much TV as you want. Um, so this is the independent power system, which is not hooked up to any grid. All right, we're up here on the roof now. It's a it's a hundred year roof, uh, baked on finish uh, metal, and there's the back side of the panels going in to the power module. But um, the roof brings the water to a simple gutter, extruded gutter. And in this case, we didn't use plastic cisterns. We homemade the cistern out of tires. It's sort of like a room with a metal roof. And the water goes into there, and gravity feeds into the water organizing module, which we'll look at next. And these two little black stubs, one on either side, are power outlets because we have enough power that if we want, we can throw in two or three of the typical Ski Valley electric lines that melt snow on the roof and it'll run as water into the gutters and into the cistern. We don't really need that here, but if you do, you have enough power and it's built in. So this is a homemade cistern with a metal roof and this metal roof uh, on the building catches very clean water, goes to the gutters and into the cistern. It's just that simple. Whenever it rains, water's running in this cistern and it's pretty full right now. Okay, we're in the uh, mechanical room now. You can see we have a big washer dryer and uh, right behind this closet here are the sealed, the eight sealed batteries uh, that we don't have to get to because they are sealed. But here is the water organizing module with a pump and filters. The filters get cleaned every two or three months. That's it for the maintenance. There is a drinking filter here and there is a gas demand hot water heater that only comes on if the solar hot water is not hot enough. We do not have the solar hot water heater installed on this building, but we do have a rough end for it. So the water from the cistern, gravity feeds right into the WAM, and I can actually observe right now how much water I've got. There's my level of water in my observation tube. This is how much water we've got on hand. That's almost full. And you can always see how much water you've got. We call this the water organizing module because it cleans and organizes and pressurizes the water so that it comes out uh, the tap like a normal um, home. Now let's just look at that water coming out here in one of the bathrooms. Um, we'll see the we have normal water pressure, and uh, here it is, normal water pressure from the WAM, from the cistern, from the sky. Now notice this little timer here. If you want hot water, you just turn this 15 seconds, 20 seconds before you need it, maybe even 30, and the water circulates through the hot water heater because this is far away from the water organizing module. So when this clicks off, you turn this and you've got instant hot water. Here is the drinking filter. The water organizing module has a drinking filter on it. And so we give everybody drinking water at every fixture, um, kitchen and bath. So there is the water system. Now we'll be talking next about the sewage system. Okay, I'm in the bathroom now. We're going to look at the, the sewage system. Everything goes into these planters except for the toilet and the kitchen sink. Now, when I turn the shower on here, see, it's going to go down the drain, as does the, the sink. And the reason it's located here is because the drain goes right in to these rubber line cells that produce food. That's a fig tree right there. Uh, that's dandelion. And these are all hooked together in tandem so that they go down to the middle of the building where there are pumps in these tubes that both pump the water back to circulate it through here all day long, but they also pump it back to the water that's in the botanical cells, we call them, 
There's banana, by the way, food. Um, and it goes back to flush the toilet with the shower water that you used yesterday. Now let's do that again. The shower water goes into the botanical cells all the way down to the middle of the building because the other side does the same. It is picked up and taken back to flush the toilet and picked up and taken back for recirc and in the process creates food producing plants. So there is the sewage system. All right, I'm walking in here to the master bedroom which uh, opens up to the planter, but we can close the drapes and uh, let it be snugged up, you know, snugged up from the outside, cold. And here is our operational second layer of glass, so to speak. It's more economical than the glass, and it is also giving you the option of opening the room up to the planter and having a bigger room. This has just got a little single dinky bed in here now, but it's set up for a master, a, a king-size bed. Here is a Tristero, which is popular in New Mexico, um, for a closet. And we also have a regular closet here too. Uh, and so this is the master bedroom. Now everything about this building is simple and petite. This is the Model T Ford of Earthships. This is the affordable Earthship. And even the most fancy, most expensive Earthship I can do will not perform any better. Here is the master bedroom cooling tube, which brings the air in that the transom right up here shoots out. So. Every room is set up this way. So we have two bedrooms, two baths, and I've taken you through all of the systems in the Refuge Earthship. And there are drawings for it online, and they're also teaching how to build it in the Earthship Academy. Come see us.